to, to the northern sport mods and kind of go over what, what we're looking at for the first year rule changes with, with the uh, IMT northern sport mods. So, uh, again, body rules. Um, bodies are extremely similar. We run a 5X spoiler on the back of our sport mod. You don't have to. If you run one, it has to be at least an inch. So, one to five inches on spoiler. You can run one or not run one. Uh, back panel, back on the car again. We're going to run the IMCA tire on the back. And I think the current Lissota tire on the front for the whole season, correct? Yep. So, you only need IMCA tires on the back, and you can use up on so the tires that you've got on the front of the car throughout the season. You can run your IMC tires on the front also. That's yeah, you can run all four, but if you can only afford two and put two on the back, then that'll work. If you're going to take your B model or go to IMC model, you have to run all four. Right. Yeah. The modified is, is all four. This, this four pod uh, will be just two rears and uh, then the Lasota tire up front. W, the R, or the regular. <laughs> yeah, what is the difference in your tires? Are you going to let any 35 run, basically? Uh, mm -hmm. stick, stick, yeah. stick with the W. Okay. Yeah, which is cool. the yeah. <coughs> What's that? Curve tire, whatever that is. <laughs> whatever the other one is. Could be S, T, and R next year. Oh, yeah. Somebody asked a question about tires. Oh, tires? Oh, okay. Yeah. They're right there. What is your main, what's the main difference between the two tires? Ours is hockey puck. Yeah. Okay, well, I hear that. That tells me. It's a little it. shorter. It's a little shorter and uh, just the construction of it. It's got a lot more sidewall in it. It's a lot flatter across the tread than what the Wissota tire I think Tim's got a, brought a couple right here yeah. you guys want to take a look at. It. And there's an inch difference. There's an inch of stagger. Yeah. You can get out of them. Yeah. That's what you're going to get from him. Excuse me? You're going to get an inch out of them? Yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Inch to an inch and a half is what you're going to stretch on. Yeah. But not much more than you would have. I've really never seen it. So. Okay. And that's all the way around the car. We get one option? Yep. Right. Perfect. But we have lots of people here that are more than willing to track all set up, to get pointers, to do, I mean, all your, all your long. That's the nice thing about people. There's a lot of options, a lot of people you can talk to more any of this stuff. They're not the secrets, they're not, I'm just saying, they're not the only care. If you're struggling, you don't call these guys from the RP, whatever, they're all, they're all here to help, so. And I'm all for the same tire for that. Yeah, we allow, as far as altering the tire, the only thing we allow is grinding and siping. We did not allow grooving. Do you allow grooving now? So we did not allow regrooving of the tire. You can grind it to the edge of the tread, and you can sipe the tire, but we don't groove. So it's pretty simple. Sure. Sipe as much as you want? Huh? Sipe as much as you want, just don't cut it. Yeah, you can sipe it as much as you want. You can't groove it. Be careful you don't sipe it up until it looks grooved. But yeah, you can sipe it all you want. How long have you been using this current tire? How many years have you been on? Oh. Yeah, uh, it's the only tire we've ever had. Um, yeah, we, we don't change tires. Uh, uh, ten years ago, we switched from the American Racer to the Hoosier, but we took the compound of the old American Racer KK704, which stands for KK's Keith Kanak, who founded IMCA. We took the compound with us to Hoosier, and so really for the past, I started in 91, for the past 25-ish years, we haven't had a tire change. It's just, once again, changes cost money. Anybody else? So basically, whatever you've been racing this year is legal by the 2014 rules will be legal next year with the exceptions we outlined on the body and the tire. And the <coughs> yeah. yeah, the sport pod, are you going to allow the vert trainings in there? Yeah, if that's what you're racing now, we're going to allow that during the transition. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll give you some years to go through that, but once again, for next year, absolutely.
And I've worked on the track since before Kevin bought it seven years ago. And I honestly haven't seen this much buzz at our racetrack in seven years. We had so many different winners. We had a guy in an $8,000 turnkey modified come out and win. And I know some guys are going to say, well, if he can't afford more than that, he shouldn't be racing a modified. I see that a little different as we're working, working at a racetrack. It's good for the sport. We had new winners in sport mods. We had new winners in mods. We had a guy in the sport mod. He, I, saw, I ran into him at our parts store, and he was buying three three new tires. He said, "I guess I'm not putting a new body on my car this year." And he won three features out there. He hasn't won a feature in six years. They never bought another set of tires. Though. And never bought another tire. <coughs> so do you have full blown sport mods running on your track? What's that? Do you have full blown 100 percent IMC sport mods running on your track? Yes. How was the winning versus the uh, uh, so second in points? Yeah, second in points by one point. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's so close. Um, he won the last four races of the year. What's he here to do? I've never, as being the promoter, guys, I've never had racers uh, text me and call me and thank me for doing this. They, they saved so much money. They, they were so happy that the mid pack guys are now competing. Um, and everyone, I didn't have any more complaint. I mean, at first it was a little bit, but after we got going, guys, it was it was awesome. Not only that, they all called the us and thanked us. <laughs> and after, I mean, they, it's like openly, you know, they, they're all friends, they're all happy for each other. Uh, one thing I want to say about these guys is, uh, I called, they, let's see, we called him up like on a Thursday, Friday. He drove all the way from Omaha, right? Yeah. Um, seven and a half hours to meet with us on a Monday, and then drove all the way home overnight, went to work the next day. Same thing with the situation. They are, they're here for you. They want answering calls. They don't, don't speculate, just give them a call. Anytime, I wouldn't even, you know, venture to say five o'clock in the morning, right? But you know, yeah. So, <laughs> um, they always answer. If you don't, they're usually on a plane somewhere else, so then they always call back. Um, they're, like they said, they're exceptional to work with. They want to answer your questions, so make sure you utilize that. They are open uh, to that situation. We have a, a full-time staff of 15 people. Then we have regional people in, in all areas of the country. Any, any given night during the race year, I would say there's anywhere between six to eight IMCA people at a track somewhere. Um, I would hate to even guess how many races I, I've been to, the same with Dave, but it, it's our job. We take it very, very seriously. And the only way we can help you guys help the promoters is to be out there. There's just no way we can do it sitting at our home track or sitting behind a computer just answering emails. We, we, we've got to be out there for you guys. Be out there and be on it. Exactly. That's, that's the only way we're, we're going to do it. I mean, um, night, uh, excuse me, 2015 will be IMCA's 100th year. We were founded in 1915. Um, June 6, 1979 is when IMCA Keith Kanak introduced the very first modified to say, you know, as we see it up in the Midwest. Uh, that car's been restored and sits in the museum in Speedway Motors in Lincoln, Nebraska. So we've, you know, we developed the modified and uh, we don't have any plans of going any place. We're here for the long term. We're, uh, you know, a younger company, the people that, I shouldn't say that, I'm old, but a lot of the people that work there are younger, and, uh, you know, we're, we're here for you guys. Do you assist in tech? Do you people assist people in tech? Are you yes. there? Yeah, but early, my national tech guy came, Tom came to us twice and helped Rick and answered any questions that Rick had or any questions the drivers had. <clears throat> was it the second time Tom was there? I, uh, we had three modifiers to bring their car over to Tom so he could go through absolutely everything on that car because they wanted to go to the movie next year. So he went through that thing from the back, top to bottom, gave him a list of everything that needed to be changed, fixed to go to Boone to go to the Super Nationals. I mean, he's been, after the race, are you people there to yep. check those cars? Yeah, Tom still got his own. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we have 165 tracks. You know, we can't be every place, but when, when our people, whether it be Dave or Tom or some of our regional tech people, go to a track, they're, they're there for the duration. More importantly, what they're there for 
isn't to just disqualify you guys. It's to work with you, answer questions, do what it takes to get you guys where we need to be. I, I'm not personally a big fan of coming in there and disqualifying a lot of people. I, I think Dave's the best in the business at educating people, getting them, telling them why we do this, what went into our decisions for this rule. And I think when you know we can do that, take time for you guys and show you and tell you why we did something, what we're hoping to accomplish, and, and obviously what we have accomplished with it, it makes it a lot easier for you guys. And it, and it builds a better relationship with our tech guys and, and once again, our customer, you, you guys sitting out here. Jeff, I was just gonna add, uh, in response to your question on teching, not only are they gonna be there, but for instance, I've got Leroy here from Arlington who was offered to come up the first night and help out when I need him to back up our tech guy who will now have training from IMCA. Buffalo River has, some of those guys have offered to do the same thing. So if you're questioning whether it's just going to be the same tech guy and what if, what if, it's not a problem. There are backup tech people that will be checking and answering questions too. It's not just going to be one guy. Yeah, when I, when I go to a racetrack, I pretty much attach myself to that guy quite a bit because I don't know when I'll see him again. And so I'm trying to make sure we're all on the same page that it gets done consistently track to track the same way. And, and so I kind of wear that hat with that. I thought they had zero on me. You can talk all day. Yes, yes. But uh, anyways, we try to be very consistent. I think that's one of the biggest things we offer is consistency. And I'll help that guy. As far as phone calls and whatever, you know, it's pretty much every day. I have to speak on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights because people are racing. And so I'll stay up because inevitably it's going to the way our phones go uh, on the weekends, about 9 o'clock, we'll get the first batch of our East Coast calls. And then it will roll all the way through to probably <coughs> Central Time, 1, 1 1.30. That's when we'll wrap it up everything in the West Coast. We're, we're currently in 27 states right now, I am saying So we've got, uh, we've got all the time zones covered. And, you know, once again, Leroy, last year was your first year tech, wasn't it? Leroy, <laughs> <laughs> how many years have you been doing it? 30-something. Yeah, I, you've been down, I've been down, I've seen what, one of you guys, five years, whatever. I think you've been moving every year I've ever been there. Yeah. So, Leroy, you know, that works for Bob at Arlington, he's been around this deal since the get. He's got to, obviously, once again, knows what we're expecting and why we're expecting it. And to have somebody up in this area, like this, you know, when we have to right come down and help us and boom, that's how much we think of him and his technical abilities. So, that's going to be a big asset to us up here. But we're for the rest of the week, well, the, the new track now, we're not going to have him there. So, you might have Princeton. Yeah. You might have Princeton right away. Okay, well, that'd be great. Yes. No, you have him. Thumbs up for that. <laughs> However, just, I'm, just, I'm not saying whatever we're going to have saying or whether we do or don't if it's a Wasota tech from if he goes from one track to our IMCA track then now if driver C he's not doing shit the way it should be done then um, you know once again that if, if there's an issue with what you guys believe in techie you know, once again, we, we obviously encourage you to talk to your promoter and say, hey, you know, we, we would like to do this. Yep. Um, and, and I'm trying to be politically correct here. If, if you're not happy with the answer with the promoter, please come to us. We're here for you guys also as a sanctioning body. So we're here to, you know, support the tracks and yourself. I should just give my story. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that um, for all of the, the tech people, we have a standardized manual that we send out to all the tracks. And, and what we do in this is we break down our rule book in all the classes. We have some pictures in here too of maybe some things to look for. I can't show you guys because I don't want to give you any ideas. <laughs> but we have pictures in here, stuff that we've seen throughout the country that we've basically caught people. So to kind of give the you know, the local guys, a heads up. 
But I think more importantly, what this book does, it breaks down every. You write that is right there too. It breaks down every interaction in the book with the punishment. You know, whether it be a, a fix-it ticket, a deficiency slip, as we call it, where we're going to give you, hey, you know, next time you show up here, please have it fixed. It's a carbon copy slip. The track will keep one. We'll keep one. That way, we can keep it on file. Uh, you know, then we, we might have a last place in the feature type penalty. And then even a uh, no points, no money type disqualification with the possibility of a fine and or suspension. So everything's broken out in here once again to try to keep that consistency throughout not only track to track, but throughout the country. So that's something we try to do for our tech guys to get them all on the same page. Thank you, sir. And there's Dave's pictures on here too. So he's kind of like real famous. Yeah. He uh, can have a book signing after. <laughs> and that's something you crack down on them with your own tech guys. Yeah, if somebody needs help, you'll help them. If you got a good tech person down at the racetrack, you're raising that down, you'll still have a good tech person. You'll support that guy. If your tech person needs some help in understanding what our expectations are and getting the tech done and getting it done correctly, we'll help. Anything else? Anybody? I'll tell you what, if you're okay, let's take like a 15 minute break. 10? 